السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن عدة الشهور عند الله ثنا عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم ذلك الدين القيم فلا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we are in this very, very special month, the month of Sha'ban. And the month preceding this month is the month of noon and we say Rajab, a very special month has gone. The month of Rajab is the month of, from those months which are mentioned in the Quran as Ashurul Hurum meaning the month of Zul Qa'da, Zul Hijjah and Muharram, as well as the month of Rajab. These are known as Ashur al-Hurum, the months of, which are sanctified. Now bear in mind, just like how we are fast approaching the blessed month of Ramadan, we remind you of the beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is, recorded on the authority of Usama ibn Zayd radiyallahu anhu annahu sa'alahu ya rasulullah lam araka tasumu min shahrim min ashuhuri ma tasumu min sha'ban that I do not see you fast from those months like how you keep fast in the month of sha'ban so he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied zaka shahrun that is the month where people neglect, meaning the month between Rajab and Ramadan. And it is the month where A'mal are raised to Rabbul Alameen. And I love that my action be taken in the state that I am fasting, here is a hadith which is recorded in Nasai. Just like a how we have this amazing reminder that the month of Ramadan is a very, very special month. And given that of the fadail and the virtues of your fasting in the month of Ramadan, your standing at prayer at night in the month of Ramadan, مَنْ صَامَ إِمَانًا اَحْتَسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ زَنْبِ All the previous sins are forgiven. So your fasting in the month of Ramadan with iman and ihtisab, iman and, you know, you are hoping to earn that reward. All your previous sins are forgiven. So it's important that a people prepare for that very special month. And one of those ways is that we start getting ourselves accustomed to fasting, preparing for the blessed month of Ramadan, using this month of Sha'ban as an amazing opportunity. And given that the Prophet Sallallahu himself used to keep fast in this month of Sha'ban, it seemed as if though he kept the whole of Sha'ban and Ramadan, it was like, you know, it seemed as if though it was consecutive. Yes, we understand that you do not fast on Yom al-Shak, the day where there is doubt in it. Um, so Ever is going to fast on Yom al-Shak. That is the day of doubt. He is disobeying Abu al-Qasimi, meaning the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So your fast in this month of Sha'ban is no doubt a month where a people generally neglect this month. It should be used to prepare for the blessed month of Ramadan. And even before we leave this month of Sha'ban, there is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It reminds us of a very special night. The night which is known as Laylatul Nisfi min Sha'ban. That is the middle of the month of Sha'ban. And when you look at how you commence the month of Sha'ban, so if Friday 4th of March was the first of the month of Sha'ban, and we know our Islamic Days begin from after the Maghrib. So that means 
that when you go and you want to know when is Laylatul Nisf in Sha'ban, if the Friday, if that is the 25th of March, or oh sorry, the 18th of March, if that is 18th of March, Friday, 15th, the day of Sha'ban. So that means Laylatul Nisf in Sha'ban will be 17th of March. So now the question is, what is the significance of Laylatul Nisf in Sha'ban? Today we already, so very fast we have left already the first week of this month of Sha'ban. And when it comes to Thursday, Subhanallah, next week Thursday, 17th of March. That coincides with Laylatul Nisf in Sha'ban. It's important, understand Laylatul Nisf in Sha'ban, the middle of the Nisf, Nisf means half, or the middle, half of the month of Sha'ban. So when is Laylatul Nisf in Sha'ban? When is the 15th night of Sha'ban? Yes, if you have started your month of Sha'ban with the physical sighting of the Hilal and the crescent moon, then we go to the middle of the month of Sha'ban, Laylatul Nisfi min Sha'ban. And now the question is, what is the significance of Laylatul Nisfi min Sha'ban? First is this to say, yes, there is a very special night, which is known as Laylatul Nisfi min Sha'ban. So when we see and we look at the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, يَطَّلِعُ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ جَمِيعِ خَلْقِهِ لَيْلَةٍ نِسْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ فَيَغْفِرُ لِجَمِيعِ خَلْقِهِ إِلَّا لِمُشْرِكٍ أَوْ مُشَاحِنٍ At Almighty Allah, He looks at His creation on the Laylatin Nisfi min Sha'ban and He فَيَغْفِرُ لِجَمِيعِ خَلْقِهِ that is very important, given that he وسلم, is reporting that if Almighty Allah Ta'ala is looking at his creation and he is looking at his creation, you know, when we say with forgiveness and he is forgiving all of his creation. But there are, in this narration, two categories of people that are excluded from the forgiveness of Almighty Allah Ta'ala. So who are these two types of people? Illa li mushrikin aw li mushahinin Except that who is a mushrik or a mushahin. Now when you think about mushrik, if Almighty Allah Ta'ala is looking at all of his creation on the 15th night of Sha'ban. And as for the mushrik, we have a verse in the Holy Quran in Surah An-Nisa. Inna Allah la yaghfiru ay yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. Then it is understood very clearly that when Almighty Allah Ta'ala is looking at His creation and there are those who are making dua and they are praying and they are asking Allah Ta'ala for forgiveness and for pardon. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika, you know, you are seeking bi'afwik min iqabik. You are seeking the pardon of Almighty Allah Ta'ala from His punishment. Now when you're asking and you're praying for Almighty Allah Ta'ala to forgive, there are those whom, if they're engaging in actions with the shirk, where a partner is associated unto Allah, when you are not worshipping Almighty Allah Ta'ala, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Thee alone do we worship and thee alone do we seek help. When we are praying every day to Almighty Allah Ta'ala, we are asking Allah Ta'ala to keep us on the straight path. <laughs> we do not want to be from those whom are excluded from the forgiveness of Almighty Allah Ta'ala. So it is, 
understanding how do we connect ourselves with our Creator. If we coming and want to come closer to Almighty Allah Ta'ala, just like how we remind ourselves that in the month of Rajab, if one of the opinions about a very special journey of the Prophet Sallallahu from Masjid Al-Haram to Masjid Al-Aqsa, and from there he was taken up to the seventh heavens, and it was on that night that Almighty Allah Ta'ala made obligatory upon the believers to perform their prayer five times a day. So now the question is, if we come to the Laylatul Nisfim in Sha'ban, and we think that now we can stand and we can make prayer, and you are asking Allah Ta'ala for pardon and for forgiveness, but at the same time, we have not brought or come closer to Almighty Allah Ta'ala with that action, that pillar of Islam, Ruknun min arkan in Islam. If we are from amongst those who have abandoned the salah and the prayers, and then we feel that we can come and we can worship Almighty Allah Ta'ala on a very special night, like Laylatul Nisfim in Sha'ban, and hoping and praying that Almighty Allah Ta'ala forgive us. But the very next day, or the days after that, we continue with abandoning the salah and the prayers. We do not bring it into our lives. And then we are hoping for Almighty Allah Ta'ala to forgive us. Then we are deluded. Then we are really following, or we are under the deception of the shaitan. And that is a trap because... Almighty Allah Ta'ala, He loves that His servant turn to Him with tawbah, with repentance, with istighfar. When Almighty Allah Ta'ala is looking at all of His creation and He is forgiving those, li jami'i khalqihi, and He is excluding the mushrik. Yes, the mushrik is that one who associates a partner unto Allah. If He is also excluding the one that is a mushahin, the one that has, you know, when we say shahna or there is hatred and baghda or there is animosity, there is grudge against a fellow Muslim brother and that person who has an harboring or he has that grudge against his brother and now he is hoping and thinking that he will pray and make dua that Allah Ta'ala forgive, then this is a reminder that if we want our sins to be forgiven, if we want Almighty Allah Ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings and our mistakes, then we have to work to cement the relationships, the ties. Imagine those who have severed the ties of their family. How can we attain the mercy and rahmah from Almighty Allah Ta'ala if we ourselves cannot show rahmah, if we ourselves cannot have that compassion if we ourselves cannot forgive each another, and now we are hoping that Almighty Allah Ta'ala forgive us, we all are on a journey and we want that Almighty Allah Ta'ala allow us to reach the blessed month of Ramadan because we want our sins to be forgiven. So when we are coming to the middle of the month of Sha'ban and Almighty Allah Ta'ala, in fact, in another narration, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, وَلِلَّهِ فِيهَا أُتَّقَاءٌ مِّنَ النَّارِ بِعَادَدِ شُعُورِ غَنَمِ كَلْبٍ Like Almighty Allah Ta'ala, He forgives so many people emancipation from the fire of hell. Like the number of hair that is found on the tribe of Kalb. A very large tribe with a large number, you know, of animals. If you think about the hair that is found on the uh, ghanam and the animal or the goat of the tribe of Kalb, you can well imagine how many people Almighty Allah Ta'ala is forgiving. But again, He excludes from those people, like the mushrik and the mushahin, and in this narration, the qati'i rahimin. The mudmini khamrin, 
that is the one that is a mushrik, the one that is a mushahin, the one that also is severes the ties of his rahim and womb relations and family ties. Wala ila akin the one that is even disobedient to his parents, the one that is a habitual drinker. So get in, you know consumption of alcohol and or the taking of the drugs and all these are from those people who are excluded from the forgiveness of Almighty Allah Ta'ala. In this narration there is also mention about the musbilin, those you know when you have extending the, the, the trousers beyond the ankles in the commentary or you know, in the narration, uh, in the explanation for those who have that arrogance and that pride and they do it for that reason and all those discussion mainly is helping us to understand how we should work to purifying our hearts because we have a lot of diseases in our hearts. We look at the condition and the plight of the what's happening around in the world. We speak so much about the plight of a people and the hardship and the pain of the suffering of the people right now. If it is, yes, wherever there is zulm and oppression, it does not matter whom is, who are the people. Most important is to remember that there are from amongst the people those who are the zalimin and those who are the tyrants and those who are creating and creating bloodshed in the lands. Yes, indeed, as we are fast approaching the blessed month of Ramadan and the month of Ramadan is to remind us also of the condition of a plight of a people whom do not have. You know, when you enjoy the food and you enjoy the iftar and you are keeping that fast, how happy do you feel at the time of iftar? And just like how, how many years have gone by since we have seen the plight of the people in the land of Sham. You have seen and you have seen how many years have gone by that people are still living as refugees. People are still living in the tents. People are still spending the winter months in cold, bitter, freezing conditions, while you and I have been enjoying the blessings and the na'ma and the bounties from Almighty Allah Ta'ala, yes indeed, see how condition can change. How we have seen and we have witnessed, how does it feel when the people have been driven out of their homes, when the people are in a state of desperation, when those who are oppressed Yes, indeed, and when they cry out to come and to help and to bring, you know, to come to their assistance, then we are reminded that Almighty Allah Ta'ala in many places in the Quran gives us an understanding of how also we should respond to the condition and the plight of those people who are living in pain and suffering. We will continue the discussion after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.